life and I can't explain just how much you mean to me now. You have saved me, Lord. Give all that I am to you every day. I could be the light that shines your name. Every day, Lord, I learn to stand upon your word. And I pray that I, I might come to know you more. You are God. Every single step I take down Every day I can Be the light unto the world Every day You I live for Every day I follow after you Every day I walk with you my Lord What to say Lord is You give me life and I Explain just how much you mean to me now. You have saved me, Lord. Give all that I am to you every day. I can be the light that shines your name. Every day, Lord, I learn to stand upon your word. And I pray that. I might come to know you more, you are God. Every single step I take that, every day I could be the light unto the world. Every day, it's you I live for. Every day, I follow after you. Every day, I walk with you, my Lord. sixth graders who are moving on to junior high ministry um, today will be the last day that you will be with us and I'm so happy that you are gone that's not what I meant to say what I meant to say was that I'm so happy that you're grown up and that you're moving on to junior high ministry um, when you go through changes in life uh, it's always difficult, uh, never easy um, because of the uncertainty, a lot of anxieties, uh, a lot of fear uh, that could uh, be felt in your heart. I just want you to know that um, God is with you and He will carry you through whatever challenges that you have. And uh, just like the memory verse that we had for July, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever hebrews 13 8 that means that the same love jesus had for you on the cross uh, is the same love that he faces you today and uh, he never changes so i want you to hold on to the to the promises that god has made in his word and grow in the love of jesus in your life um, that's not the only change that happened. Uh, that you know your situation, 
uh, but also changes that are happening in your in your body you know I remember a uh, sixth grader moving on to junior high I didn't see him for one year he came back to me and he used to sound like a Mickey Mouse he used to say hi Pastor Jerry hi Pastor Jerry and after that he came back he goes hi Pastor Jerry his voice has changed and he says hi Pastor Jerry why are you so short <laughs> talk to him anymore but anyways i just want you to know whatever change that happened i want you to hold on to the thing that never changed and that is his word our lord jesus christ and he will carry you through so hang in there have fun and always visit us and to say hello and if you need someone to pray or you need someone to look, be uh sharing your uh a difficulty we always are here for you and our hearts are open to you so you guys have fun have an exciting time and I just want to say I love you take good care of yourself and be safe bye bye hello boys and girls this is Pastor Deborah I have seen you guys for a long time but um, I'm glad to be back here for today uh, I know a majority of you guys already know about me, but I would like to introduce myself to those of you who do not know me yet. So my name is Deborah. I'm married. I have two beautiful daughters. My older one, her name is Shine. She's going to be a junior high this year. And my younger one, her name is Hadassah, and she's going to be third grade this year. So you're going to see her soon. Uh, I want to thank Pastor Jerry for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share a word of God with you today. And I also want to thank all upper elementary teachers who always has been so faithful to serve this ministry. So when Pastor Jerry asked me to preach on the book of Esther, I was very excited. It's because the book of Esther always has been my one of favorite books of the Bible. And there are so many precious teachings that we could learn from this book. But before I go into the point, I would like to share a summary of this book with you guys, especially for those of you who do not know this story very well. So there was a king named Xerxes, and he was the king of the land of Persia. Persia was the biggest land at the time. And because the king wanted to brag about his fame and his wealth, he invited all his officials and nobles and the people into his banquet. And the banquet went for, do you know how many days long? You know what, believe it or not, the banquet went for 180 days. I know, it was a long banquet, right? And at the end of the banquet, the king wanted to show his queen named Vashti to the people because she was such a beautiful woman. So the king wanted to show her to the people. So the king sent one of his servants to the queen and tell her to come to his banquet. But sadly, the queen refused his command. And obviously, the king Xerxes was super angry at her and he banished her from her throne. And a little later, the king wanted to find a new queen, and there was a young, beautiful Jewish woman named Esther, uh, who was raised by her cousin Mordecai because she was orphaned. And out of all beautiful women in the land of Persia, Esther became the new queen because God's grace and God's favor was upon her. And Esther's cousin, Mordecai, he was one of the officials of the king. And there was an evil guy named Haman, who was the prime minister of the king. And for some reason, the evil guy, Haman, he hated Mordecai so much that he not only planned to kill Mordecai, but also all his people, all Jewish people in the land of Persia. And when Mordecai figured this out, he was scared. And he sent one of his servants to Queen Esther and ask for her help. You know, Mordecai told Esther to go to the king and ask for his help. 
But when Esther heard about this, at first she was afraid because it's not like her going to the king and see him and ask for his help. But whoever wants to meet the king, the king has to call the person first. And whoever against this law, the person will be put into death. Unless the king gives his golden scepter, which means that the king forgives you and accepts his request, uh, your request. And obviously, the Queen Esther know about this law, and she knew she might die. She was afraid to go to the king. But later on, she realized that God has a special plan for her life, that God wants to save his people through her. She decided to obey God, and she decided to go to the king and see him and ask for his help. So one day, Esther went into the king's court, and when king saw her, she looked so lovely to him. The king gave Esther his golden scepter, which means that the king forgives her and accepts her request. And the king asked her, Esther, what is your request? And she said, King, I would like to invite you and Haman into my banquet that I have prepared for you. And the king said, yeah, of course, I'll be there. So the king and Haman, both of them went to the Queen Esther's banquet, and they were eating, they were drinking, they're having a lot of fun. And the king, obviously, be, he became so happy, and he asked Esther, Esther, what is your request? I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And the Queen Esther, she said, King, I would, like you, I would like to invite you and Haman one more time tomorrow uh, to my banquet, and I want you guys to have a fun time. And the king says, of course, we'll be there. So the next day, the king and Haman went to the Queen Esther's banquet, and they were eating again, they're dancing, they're having a lot of fun. And at the, of the, ban at the end of the banquet, the king asked the Queen Esther the same question. What is your request, Esther? I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I can even give you the half of this land. So what is your request? And finally, Esther said, King, this evil man, Haman, he tries to kill me and my cousin Mordecai, and not only us, but he is trying to kill all Jewish people, all my people in the land of Persia. I need your help. I need you to save my people. Please help me. And when the king heard Esther's request, he became furious against Haman. He told his servants to drag him out outside and kill him. And as Esther requested, the king saved all Jewish people in the land of Persia and let them be freed. So boys and girls, this is the whole story of Esther. Isn't it very interesting, right? So now I want to get into the, uh, the points that I want to share with you guys today. Uh, we'll look at chapter 4, verse 14. Okay, let's read verse 14 together. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Boys and girls, this is a word of Mordecai to the Queen Esther. And basically he said, Esther, do you know why you became a queen? Esther, do you know why you are at the position where you are at right now? It is because God has a specific plan and will upon your life. You know, you're just a, a poor young orphan who had no family, who had no parents, who had no money, but God raised you up and place, placed you into this royal position because God has a purpose for your life. Because God wanted to save his people through you. And boys and girls, what can we learn from this verse? 
you and I, all of us, we do have God's specific plan and purpose and will for our lives. Boys and girls, God put you in that specific family, in that specific school, in that specific church, because He has a plan and purpose for your life. You're not there for nothing. Your life is not an accident. There is a reason why you're alive here right now, and there is a reason why you have that family, you have that school, you have that church, and all your surroundings, all of areas of your lives. There is a purpose and there is a plan of God for your life. Boys and girls, when we forget about this truth, many times we complain about our lives. You know, when we forgot about, the, about this truth that God has a purpose and plan for our lives and every, every areas of our lives God, God put us there according to His purpose, when we forget, forget about this truth, we become complain about our lives. God, why this family? You know, I wish I was born in that family. That family looks better. That parents looks better. God, why this school? The teachers are weird, friends are weird. I don't want to go to this school. Why don't you send me uh, the other school? God, why this church? God, why this pandemic? Boys and girls, when we forget that God has a purpose and plan in our lives, and God put us here according to His purpose, we start to complain about our lives all the times. Instead of being thankful, Instead of being satisfied with our lives, uh, we're being complained all the times. So boys and girls, I want you guys to turn around your eyes and I want you guys to stop asking God why questions, but instead, I want you guys to start to ask Him different questions and I call it what questions. So instead of you saying, God, why this family? I want you guys to ask him, God, what do you want me to learn from this family? What kind of person you want me to be through this family? Yes, God, my family is broken. Yes, God, there are a lot of issues going on in my family. Yes, God, my family is not perfect. But God, what kind of person do you want me to be through this family? And instead of asking God, God, why this school? Instead of that, ask God, God, what do you want me to do at this school? What do you want me to do? And instead of saying, God, why this church? Why Grace Korean Church Upper Elementary? Instead of saying that, ask God, God, what do you want me to learn? from Grace Korean Church Upper Elementary. Instead of asking God, God, why this pandemic? I hate my life. This is miserable. Instead of saying that, ask God, God, what do you want me to learn through this pandemic? Boys and girls, you know what? If you stop asking God why questions, but instead of asking him what questions, God is going to teach you why. He might say, hey, do you know why did I put you in the family? I know your family is broken. I know your family has issues. God, but, but I put you there. I put you in the family because I want you to be a person who can really forgive others and truly love others. Do you know why I put you in this school? Do you see that girl? She really needs Jesus Christ in her lives. Why don't you go to her and tell her about me and save her life? Do you see that boy in your school? 
He never had a friend. Why don't you be a good friend with him? Do you know why I put you in Grace Korean Church Upper Elementary? Because I want you to learn what it means to build up, build up the body of Jesus Christ and love brothers and sisters in Christ. Do you know why I let you go through this pandemic? It's because I want to make you a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, when you stop asking why questions, but change your question into what questions, God is going to teach you. And God is going to let you know what is His plan and purpose in your life. So boys and girls, let us stop asking Him why. You know what? Let us just trust Him. Let us just trust His timing. Let us trust His plan. And let us trust that He is a good, our Heavenly Father, our good Abba Father, who always wants to give us His best. And from now on, I want you guys to stop asking Him why questions. But from now on, I want you guys to start to ask Him what questions. And I want you guys to figure out God's plan and purpose upon your life. Okay, let's continue to look at verse 16. Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So boys and girls, after Esther, Esther figured it out that God has a plan and purpose upon her life, and that was to save his people, Jewish people, Esther decided to obey God. You know, she decided to obey his command. Boys and girls, you know what? Do you know God can only use a person who's obedience to him? Boys and girls, even though you realize your purpose, and even though you realize your plan, uh, God's plan upon your life, if you do not obey God, God cannot do anything through you. The reason why God could use Esther to save his people, it was because Esther was a woman who obeyed God's word. Boys and girls, we must remember this truth. If you want to be used by God, and if you want God to use for something great, for His kingdom and for His glory, you must remember that God could only use a person who is obedient to Him. Boys and girls, this morning, Pastor Deborah wants to ask you, what does God command you to do? What does God ask you to do? What does God tell you to obey? Maybe some of you, God asks you, can you forgive that person? You might say, God, you know, she has been always mean to me. You know, I don't want to forgive that person. It's really difficult. Yes, boys and girls, obeying God is a very difficult thing. You know, sometimes you literally feel like you're dying because you have to do the things that you don't want to do. But you know what? When God commands you to forgive someone, obey Him and see what result that God is bringing to you. You know, Pastor Deborah, I promise you, if you obey God and forgive someone, you will see how God is going to bless you and how God is going to make your relationship beautiful. And there are some of you, God commands you and say, Hey, my son, my daughter, why don't you turn off your phone? Why don't you turn off your computer? Why don't you turn off your YouTube channel? But instead, 
Why don't you spend more time with me? Can you spend more time with me? Boys and girls, if God asks you to do this, would you obey? You know, Pastor Deborah, I promise you, if you obey God's command to spend more time with you, God is going to bless your life and God is going to use you like Esther who does amazing things for His kingdom and for His glory. Boys and girls, this morning, I want you guys always remember that God could only use a person who's obedient to Him. And I'm praying that you and I, all of us who, who are listening to this sermon, I wish all of us we could be like Esther, who obeys God, and because she obeyed her, Him, that she could do amazing things for His kingdom and for His glory. Uh, let's... Uh, Okay, I want to wrap up my sermon today. So through the book of Esther, especially chapter 4, we learn two things. First, every one of us, like Esther, God has a specific plan and purpose on our lives. And now our job is... It's not asking him why questions, but instead asking him what questions and trust him and trust his plan and trust his timing. And when we do that, we could always be thankful and we could always be satisfied in our lives instead of being complained all the time. And second, we must obey God's command in our lives. You know what? Whatever God tells you to do, we must obey. Especially if there is any of you who wants to be used like Esther, you know, who wants to do great things for God and for His kingdom, you must be a person of obedience. So boys and girls, these are the two lessons that we could learn from um, today's message. And let us all pray together. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity that you have given to me. And Lord God, thank you so much for this precious souls that you made and you planned. Lord, yes, it is true that you have a spe specific plan and purpose for each one of us. And you want to use us like Esther. You want to use us to reveal your glory and your power uh, to the earth. So, Father God, we want to give you all the glory. And we want to thank you. And we want to thank for your faithfulness and your goodness upon our lives. Jesus, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, boys and girls, as you guys know, Pastor Deborah moved to Korean speaking junior high ministry. We call it KM Youth. And I'm here because if there, there is any of you, I know you guys are all, majority of you guys are English speaking students, but I'm just asking if there are any of you who's more comfortable in Korean language, I wish you guys can come to our KM Youth and be a part of our family. So if there's any of you like that, please contact me or talk to your parents or talk to Pastor Jerry about this. And even if you're not a Korean-speaking student, if you're still interested in KM Youth, we are more than welcome to have you and have you be part of our family. So boys and girls, thank you so much one more time. And I'll share our promo video. I hope to see you guys soon. We'll show how it's done. Good Pandero Jumel Kyo. 
좋은 동역자가 될게 Let's praise the Lord together from KM Welcome to KM 